In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning to all of you and welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. My dear friends, at the close of the discourse on the bread of life, Jesus confronts his listener, the people and his disciples, to make a choice. Either they believe him and ask him for this bread, or they reject his claim as preposterous. Like Jesus, Joshua in the first reading inquires into our response. Shall we serve God or not? We cannot be content with merely drifting through life. We have to make difficult choices. The Lord invites us to receive him. We can also refuse him. But as Peter asked, to whom shall we go? Far from the Lord, we will only find unhappiness. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, as we reflect on the question, to whom shall we go? We also prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord of mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ of mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord of mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Joshua calls on all the tribes of Israel to renew their covenant with the Lord. If the people recognize the Lord as their Savior and Protector, then they have to forsake the idols of their pagan neighbors. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people, If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve. The gods of your fathers serve beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, For be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord, our God, who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of a state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for He is our God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. 
Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord has eyes for the just and ears for their cry. The Lord confronts the evil doers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. When the Jews cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in his spirit, he saves. Taste and see the goodness of the Many are the troubles of the just one, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. He watches over all his bones, not one of them shall be broken. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. If we submit ourselves to the Lord Jesus, then we show Him our reverence by obeying His commandments. In the case of husbands and wives, the Lord commands them to love one another. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church. He himself the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the Church. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. and life. You have the words of everlasting life.
The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, what the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted to him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. And Jesus then said to the twelve, do you also want to leave? And then Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. Dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Saan po kayo galing? Pagkatapos ng misa, saan kayo pupunta? Maari niyo kung maaring sumagot kayo sa akin na pakailan mayro itong paring to. <laughs> Pati ba naman kung saan kami galing, saan kami pupunta, pakikialaman pa. Sa ating mga Pilipino, normal yun. Di ba? Pag may nakasalubong kayo sa mall, sa palengke, typical na tanong, saan ka galing? Ah, no, it's just to start a conversation. But it's a big no-no kapag ka ikaw ay nasa ibang bansa and you're dealing with other people. No? Sapagkat ganun talaga yung masasagot sa'yo. What does it concern you? Kung saan ako galing o kung saan ako pupunta? Wala ka ng pakialam dun. No? I remember that because in the Gospel, uh, the Lord asked the apostles, Are you also going to leave me? No? Alis din ba kayo? May pupunta rin ba kayong iba after I've told you that uh, these teachings are not for the faint of heart? Aalis din ba kayo? Huh? You know, we are always, we always seem to return home. Kaya ang ganda ng sagot ni, ni Pedro, one of the very few times na sakto yung kanyang sagot sa ating Panginoon, sapagat ang ganda ng sagot niya, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of everlasting life. We will continue to return and return and return home back to you. Ikaw ang buhay namin, ikaw ang tahanan namin, to whom shall we go? Kahit na sa ibang bahagi ng Ebanghelyo, maraming mga kwentong ganyan, even sa lumang tipan. Remember the Israelites walking in the desert no, for so many years, for so long a time, only to go home, to return. You remember the story of the prodigal son, pagkatapos maglayas, when he came to his senses, coming back home, Father, I have sinned against you and I against God. To whom shall I go? kundi uuwi sa inyo. No? Diba ang ganda, no? Um, even after Peter's denial, ganun din. Balik loob din siya. We all return home. And hopefully, we all have that kind of sense to be able to answer like Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Big sabihin, we will always return to you kahit nasaan man kami maglayag, kahit man saan kami dalhin ang aming mga paa, kahit anumang pagdaanan namin, kahit na along the way makalimutan ka namin, wala naman kami ibang mapupuntahan. We return home. To whom shall we go? You have the words of everlasting life. Pero yung uh, to be able to answer that with conviction comes after quite a process. May proseso po yan. No? 
Nung bata tayo, hindi ka agad tinuro sa atin yung Pythagorean Theorem. Natatandaan nyo pa ba yun? No? Hindi mo na kaagad tinuro sa atin yung sa mga, uh, mga difficult questions sa mathematics o kaya sa science. Nagsimula tayo sa 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2. No? Sa English, nagsimula tayo ng uh, subject-verb agreement. Yung mga basic, hindi ka agad tayo sinabak. Although may mga genius, pero kukunti lang yun. But as we progress, we are being given difficult questions, difficult problems to answer. Advanced mathematics, advanced algebra, no? uh, special questions in philosophy. Mga difficult questions. Bakit? Because those education are actually teaching us na yung buhay will become complicated. That the challenges of life will not be as easy anymore as when we are young. We're going to face it. Life will happen. And along the way, many of the things will be forgotten. Many of the things that we learned when we were young might be forgotten. But hopefully, the basic would still remain because things will become complicated. So as we mature, we're not simply content with the fundamental equations. Mahirap ang buhay. Yun yung gradual na tinuturo. No? Kaya nga po ngayon, sabi nga nung one time yung isang lolo naming pare, sabi niya, I'm really scared. Sabi ko, bakit lo? No? Are you scared to meet your creator? No, not that. I'm actually more scared for you young people because it seems that you easily give up. It seems that uh, the things that were taught to you are easily forgotten. Mukhang hindi kayo naturuan nung value na mahirap ang buhay. Ay ba, no? For those na even when young, ay tinuruan kung na life will be difficult, life will be challenging, the moment that they face the challenges of the day-to-day -day life as they grow old, mahirap buwagin at mahirap itumba. Kaya nga, no, kami po nung kami nag-aaral pa, talagang tumatayo kami kapag hindi makasagot, <laughs> pag hindi makatranslate from Latin to English. No? Minsan, isang buong, isang buong klase, nakatayo ka. No? And we remember that. It's as if our teachers were teaching us, mahirap ang buhay. Mahirap ang pagsubok na mga haharapin. And that's exactly what the gospel is all about. One of the things of the gospel. Oh, pagkatapos ko magturo sa inyo ng ganito, ng ganito, ng ganito, okay. We are already at the end, sabi nga ng introduction natin, ng diskurso ng bread of life. Okay, after I taught, oh sige, mamili kayo. To accept or not to accept. And many people left because the teaching of Christ was not easy to accept. And they left. One by one, in the gospel said, and they all returned to their old ways of life. At nung kakaunti na lang yung nasa harap ng ating Panginoon, nakita niya, o kayo, are you not also going to leave me? Ah, di ba? Eto na si Pedro. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And that is something that is very important because we have a God who doesn't only give us the basic. You have a God who can give us more, who offers more. Okay. Dito, hindi ko kayo kilala, hindi ko alam kung ano yung dahilan ng pagpunta nyo rito sa simbahan, but siguro between 80, between 70 to 80 percent, ang hinihingi ninyo ay mga simple lang. Ang una siguro ay mawala na si COVID, ano? No? That's on top of the list ng pinunta nyo rito. Pangalawa, yung mga kaibigan, kakilala ninyo na may sakit at may pinagdadaanan na, na, na mga karamdaman ay gumaling na. That must be second. Pangatlo, maluan man ng konti yung buhay. Those are all important things. But you know, the good news of the gospel is that God can give that and more, and more. And that's the reason why he said, Peter was very correct. Lord, to whom shall we go? 
you have the words of eternal life. And that's what the Lord can give us. Diba? Doon yung the discourse ng the bread of life, sabi ng ating Panginoon, no? do not simply be content with a bread that can, that can satisfy you, and yet you will still go hungry. But be content with the bread of life. At ano yung bread of life na yun? Eternal life. And that is what is being reminded to all of us today in the Gospel. Everything that we're going through will pass away. Every difficulty, may katapusan din yan. Ito si COVID, pag mutate yan. Pero like the many things in the past, it will also have an end. But eternal life, what awaits us is something that is unending. And hopefully, that thing will keep us hopeful, will also help us to hold on to our faith and will strengthen our love for one another and for God. O Kristiyano, saan kayo pupunta? Kindly all stand. I believe in one God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again, again in, glory in glory to judge the living and the, and the dead, and, and his, his kingdom, kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And, and they look forward, forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us place our trust in the Father who is ever faithful to his people in need. May he look upon us with kindness as we say, Lord, show us your kindness. Lord, show us your kindness. May our church leaders remain in their call to humility and service. May they live in Christ's truth and help unbelievers to seek God's will. We pray. Lord, show us your kindness. May our political and civil leaders always opt for what is right and just and not succumb to the temptations of power, influence, and financial gain. We pray. Lord, show us your kindness. May all peoples find secure hope in the words of Jesus, the words of eternal life. As we go through this pressing time of crisis, we pray. Lord, show us your kindness. May the Lord grant help to the needs of our sick brethren, especially those who suffer in any way because of the pandemic, we pray. Lord, show us your kindness. May our beloved dead see the hope of eternal life in the promise of Jesus' resurrection. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pause for a while, and in silence, you may now offer your personal intentions. We pray. Lord, show us your kindness. We also continue to pray in a very special way for all the devotees of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, wherever they are, 
for their well-being, especially for health and safety, we pray to the Lord. Lord, show us your kindness. We also continue to pray for the frontliners in this fight against this pandemic, especially for the health workers. We also pray, continue to pray for our leaders, for their guidance, for the leaders of the church and the guidance in uh, the leaders in our government. We pray to the Lord. Lord, show us your kindness. Father, your kindness of love surpass all our expectations. Hear our prayers and make us sharers in the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, be so graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the Church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we acclaim. of holiness may call you therefore this gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion 
He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you beheld us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our Archbishop, Fidelis, our Auxiliary Bishop, Gerard, the Master of the Order of Preachers, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now we offer to one another the sign of Christ. Peace. Peace, peace be, be with you. Peace. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, behold our Lord Jesus Christ, our healer, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the announcement. Brothers and sisters, good morning. The Dominican Community of the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag is pleased to inform you that the October Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag will be on October 3, 2021, first Sunday of October. The Novena Masses will be scheduled at 6 a.m., 7.30 a.m., 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m., 12 noon and 4.30 p.m. from September 24 to October 2, 2021. Additional Masses at 3 o'clock p.m. on September 26, Sunday. We invite you to participate in these Novena Masses and be one with us in expressing our devotion to Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. If you wish to sponsor one or several of the Novena Masses, you may fill out the form at the counters for Masses area and submit it with your donation, and you will be given an acknowledgement receipt. Or you may visit our website, www.manawagminorbasilica.org at online pamisa, where you will find available online and other options for donation. All names of donors and sponsors for Novena Masses will appear in the electronic souvenir program. Thank you very much for your continued support. God bless you. Please stand. The long and short po nung, um, nung announcement kanina ay tuloy ang piyesta natin ngayong Oktubre. Kahit anumang variant pa ang dumating at lumabas, sana wala na. Pero kahit ano pa man, tuloy pa rin po ang piyesta po natin. In fact, uh, and the, the October fiesta will be something that will be very special sapagkat uh, in, 20, in 2026, we will celebrate the centennial ng coronation ni Apo Baket. So 100 years na po uh, yung coronation po na yon. We will celebrate that. And then five years uh, ang ating uh, preparation for that celebration. At uh, yung una po ay we're going to launch yung mga activities po natin uh, through a virtual concert ng Misa de Apobaket o Misa Inanderhen na Manawag. So we will launch po yung sarili po niyang songs uh, nakakantahin dito sa Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag come October. So abangan nyo po yan. Online naman po yan. At uh, we, we invite you all to that activity. At siguro po, uh, I'm sure na napansin nyo na po yung nasa likod. In 2016 also, ay yung community ng Minor Basilica, yung mga Dominican Fathers, no, uh, noticed yung uh, extreme deterioration na po nung retablo ni Apo Baket. Spanish period pa po yan. So, hindi basa-basa nakakakuha na magkoconserve po yan. Uh, but, uh, san, we were hoping na sana pagkatapos na lang ng pandemia, but the deterioration is already severe that uh, uh, minabuti na po namin na ituloy yung pagkoconserve po ng, uh, ng retablo ni Apo Baket. It will take six months for that uh, for the conservation, and uh, that's why Apo Baket is here on the image, rather, is here only for siguro mga one week, and habang ginagawa po yung temporary throw niya dito po sa likod. So we will assure you na uh, you will continue to see her po when you come here, or doon po sa mga online or live stream services po ng uh, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. So we ask for your prayers 
we ask for your help and we ask for your assistance po dito po sa mga proyekto na ito. Maraming maraming salamat po. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Now bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you in, this ki in His kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. May Amen. He nourish, may He nourish you, you always with the teaching of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. May He turn your steps towards Himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Mass ascended, go in peace to love and serve the Lord to one another. Thanks be to God. We shall now say the prayer for the blessing ng mga may sakit at prayer for the blessing ng inyong religious articles. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters. Freedom from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, I will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. For your religious articles, we bless them. In memory of the miseries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, into the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may your religious articles be blessed and made holy. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.